How's it going everyone? Today we're going to do an updated review on my Schecter Diamond Series Nick Johnston signature guitar um, in HSS configuration. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe, make sure to like, comment down below what you think of the tones coming out of this guitar. And so I thought I'd make a little bit of an update. I've had this guitar since July last year. I've now had this guitar for 10 months and when I first bought it, I did a review which you can watch here. This is intended to be a follow-up video. So do I still like it? Do I not? Is there anything else that I don't particularly like? Is there any issues that have cropped up since that review last time? So let's get straight into it. First thing though, I am still so happy, I'm glad to say that I bought this guitar. This guitar packs an absolute punch in terms of tone, especially on the first pickup position, the neck pickup only. This neck pickup is just incredible. When I decided to buy this guitar, I thought and presumed I would mostly be on the second position for that Strat type of tone that you hear from Steve Ray Vaughan and you know all the great guitar legends. But for some reason, <laughs> yeah, it's turned out that it's the first position that I just can't stop playing. It's my favorite pickup out of all of the pickups on this guitar. And that's not saying the rest of them are bad either. It's just awesome. It's got so much punch and attitude. The thing I love about this pickup as well is the dynamics you can get out of it. Even with a high gain tone, if I pick nice and lightly, it's nice and soft. But as soon as I whack that string, it's like a punch to the face, honestly. It's like a boxer knocking you out. It just sounds awesome awesome it's just i have no idea why people hate on these pickups um you guys have been saying to me in the comments of my previous check to nick johnson review how people are taking this thing apart and just replacing all the parts i have no idea why these pickups sound amazing so i mainly live on the first position since making that review last time another favorite sound of mine and again this was a complete and utter shock I really ended up gravitating towards actually making this humbucker a split single coil sound by just lifting the tone up to split it. It just sounds amazing. Even in metal, it sounds awesome as a split humbucker. Um, it gives that extra little bit of, again, clarity, similar to a single coil when you do it like this. And it still packs a punch and it kind of tightens up the sound. So especially for like rhythm, metal playing <laughs> i can't believe i'm saying this i actually slightly prefer lifting the tone up so that the humbucker is in a split coil position it just sounds amazing it sounds so tight and punchy but still aggressive and to talk about this pickup in further detail no matter whether it's split or it's still full humbucker like a set it to just then by pushing the tone down it sounds awesome for metal What's crazy is this guitar is not marketed for metal. Yes, even though it's not marketed as a metal guitar, you can totally play metal on this thing and you're gonna hear some metal clips later on. Out of all the pickups, my least favorite is the middle. I know this is meant to be a modern guitar with vintage aesthetics and you know a tip of the hat to that company. But yeah, this middle pickup, I don't find myself using at all really. And it gets in the way when I'm picking, which is a little bit annoying. So exactly where I pick is where this middle single coil is. In terms of the best pickups on this guitar, it's these two. I'm never going to swap them out. There's absolutely no reason to, as you'll hear later. In terms of the fretboard, you know what? I have got so used to how this feels. It's so flat and comfortable to play, especially for things like legato. Um, the neck is just so comfortable to play. Even as an Ibanez guy, I just never think when I'm playing, oh, this feels weird. It's just super, super comfortable. There's no cracks in the paint, even though I've knocked it a few times into things or, you know, anything of that sort. There's no scratches on it whatsoever. Oh, there's some very, very light ones, but you have to see really carefully in the light. It's just great. So don't be afraid that if you didn't get once, there's gonna be a huge mark because that's yet to happen. And I'm pretty prone to <laughs> accidentally knocking guitars and basses into things. The only ones you can see is on the headstock, um, just ever so slightly but on the body, none. Just out of convenience, I've took the back plate off just for you know easy access to changing strings. Everything's still stock. I've not put any more springs in there. 
Um, this bridge is absolutely great. That was the biggest worry when I bought this guitar. I was thinking, oh, okay, it's the Diamond Series, not the, you know, the full all out Nick Johnston. I was worried in case this bridge wouldn't be that good. Now, obviously, if you start doing dive bombs, and of course I've tried doing dive bombs on this guitar, it's not going to stay perfectly in tune. Um, but if you're just using it sensibly, it stays perfectly in tune. So I absolutely can't complain. Um, one little thing though, I will say is, about a month ago, when I was doing gigs, I noticed that this little screw here that keeps the tremolo arm in started to come loose quite easy. So there's been a few times that I've had to tighten this up so that the tremolo bar just doesn't drop out the guitar. That's just one thing to note that that has started to happen, but it's an easy fix. You know, the guitar comes with the tools to fix that. And yeah, I am still so happy with this guitar. I'm going to say the things that would make this even better. In my humble opinion, and it's only my opinion, if they made this guitar with 24 frets, with better upper access, similar to, you know, a modern guitar like an Ibanez or ESP or whatever, this would absolutely be out of stock all the time because it's such a great guitar. If they just made it a little bit more modern than what they have done, I just think it would sell absolute buckets because that's the only two things that bother me with this guitar is that, you know, there's no 24 frets like I'm used to. And it just makes sense to have two octaves on a string, right? And the upper access is limited, just like a typical Fender Strat. Um, they could even just do it as, you know, a branch of the Shecks Nick Johnston under a slightly different name or whatever. And I would immediately buy it if they did one of those. Now I am going to do one upgrade on this guitar. What's annoying is the fact that it doesn't come with a treble bleed circuit installed already. But on this guitar, as soon as you start reducing the volume, it just gets warmer and warmer and warmer. So over the past 10 months I've had this guitar, I have never once played around with the volume control live because it just loses the top end. So tomorrow, I am taking this in to a repair shop and I am getting a treble bleed circuit installed. You're gonna hear it in this video. Now, before you even start playing, there's a lot of crackling on the volume knob. And also this tone knob is far too sensitive. It rolls far too easy. So I'm gonna get that tightened so that it's a bit harder to move. I'm gonna get the volume tone pot that's scratching sorted. And I'm also going to get a treble bleed kit installed. So let's fast forward now to tomorrow when I come back with this guitar and the treble bleed circuit installed and those problems with the volume and the tone fixed. How's it going everyone? So we are going to carry on checking out this guitar. It is two days later. I got it fixed by my local guitar luthier. So now it has a treble bleed circuit installed, which is awesome. And he managed to fix the issue with the crackling volume part. Now, the interesting thing with the crackling volume part was it was just dust that had somehow got underneath the volume part and caused all that crackling to happen. So I'm gonna show you what it sounds like now with the treble bleed circuit installed. What was interesting was, is that Malufia told me that he can't tighten up this tone control because they're automatically loose um, due to the fact that they split the humbucker. So it's just the nature of the design that they're loose like this. So that wasn't tightened, it's not a problem. Um, but the weird thing is, is now that um, I got the volume control sorted, that's also pretty loose. So I have noticed that when I've got this guitar back, sometimes when I knock into the volume, it is reducing the volume a little bit, which is a bit annoying, but it just means I have to refine my technique. So it is what it is. Right, so let's check it out. Here's what the volume control sounds like now. There we go, so a lot better. Not as dull when reducing the volume control. Right, so I thought since you guys may have not watched my first review of this guitar when I first bought it, let's do a tone test now that this volume's fixed. Right, so what we're going to do, we're going to start on the clean channel of my PRS MT15. Let's have a listen to all of the different pickups in this guitar. So let's check out the first position neck pickup. <laughs> Thank you. 
pretty punchy, right? So that's what I love about this neck pickup. Second position. So as you'd expect, very Fender Strat-like. Middle position. Sounds quite quacky, that one. Fourth position. And then lastly, number five. Let's try it with the full humbuck first. And then with the split. Interesting how much of a radical difference there is between the split humbucker and the full humbucker. Yeah, I really like the sound of that split humbucker. It wasn't something I was expecting to like actually. Um, I didn't give it a second thought when I bought the guitar. I thought it'd always just be stuck on the full humbucker mode. But nice articulation clarity and punch and it just tightens everything up as well so all those sounds so far were through the clean channel of the prs mt15 let's check out how these pickups sound with full-on gain so we're going to go backwards this time um, so we're going to start off with the humbucker um full so not split gains at 10 o'clock and the eq is at noon on the prs mt15 same with the presence <laughs> Now that has started to happen again, which is a little bit annoying. So that's another thing you can see that sometimes it just randomly falls out. I'll have to tighten that up again. But you can see how awesome this pickup reacts to high gain. You'd never believe if you had your eyes closed that this is the Schecter Nick Johnston. And I normally don't like the sound of this amp on the lead channel. I tend to avoid it and just use plugins and only use the clean channel, but it sounds awesome with this guitar. And that's the thing I love about this guitar the most is that you can take an amp that's kind of average and make it sound awesome just through the pickups. Let's try with the split now. So we split the humbucker. Let's see what it sounds like for Mel. <laughs> Doesn't that sound awesome? Again, so surprised by that split humbucker. It's still powerful, punchy, aggressive, but you get that extra articulation and it tightens up the sound so much. So I love that sound. I never thought I'd be using a split humbucker, but there we go. You get the clarity and the articulation of the notes back, which you normally tend to lose with high gain sounds. Awesome. What does this sound like for leads? Let's check it out. So we're still on the split humbucker. It just sounds great. No one is going to have a problem with that guitar tone. I'm sorry. Let's try it with the full humbucker now. I mean... Is it bad if I say that I prefer the split <laughs> version of the humbucker for leads? And it's crazy that this guitar is not marketed at all towards high gain tones because it absolutely can do it. So let's go to the fourth position. Now the fourth position doesn't handle high gain very well. So I'm inevitably going to have to turn down the gain, but this is the gain, just the same as before. <laughs> 
Not a bad sound at all, but it has lost the articulation. So we're going to bring the gain down. So the gain now is at nine o'clock. There we go. We've got some of our note definition back now. Sounds cool to me. Middle position. So this is pretty quacky. I prefer this pickup a lot with some distortion um, as opposed to just clean. It's a bit abrasive on clean, so. There we go. Second position. Again, it's good that we've reduced the overdrive because this struggles with a lot of overdrive too in terms of losing articulation and clarity, so. You get the idea. And now finally my favourite sound on this guitar that I'm always sticking to which came as also a shock. First position, so just the neck, single coil, with a decent amount of gain. Just sounds awesome. It's got so much power, punch, aggression. <laughs> See, I'm just making this up on the spot. There we go. So all those tones were just coming out of the PRS MT15. We need to remember, guys, that we're still on a metal lead channel. And we're getting these types of tones all thanks to this guitar. And because it's Edward, let's listen to the lead channel on the PRS MT15 with this guitar with the volume being rolled down to see how well it rolls off and cleans up the tone. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's the nature of this amplifier. Um, it doesn't really suit rolling the volume off. It's just more or less of the exact same sound. So I'm sure the uh, volume response would be much better on a different amp. But there we go. And if you want to hear how the tone sounds when it's not on 10, here we go. That's all the way off now. Kind of sounds like a war, closed. Middle. Full. That's manipulating the tone control from zero to 100. There we go, huge difference. I wish you'd stay in place. I'll fix that later on. Right, let's try some tones that aren't the PRS MT15. First one is going to be the Tube Screamer. So we're back on the clean channel. PRS MT15. I'm going to blast through these really quick because I did show you all these different sounds from these pedals in my initial uh, review to this guitar when I bought it last year. So here's the Tube Screamer. Level set to max. Tone kind of 11 o'clock. And then overdrive just a tiny little bit. <laughs> Running up and down scales now. I promise I don't normally just spend a whole entire video playing blues licks. <laughs> I promise. I know this is so generic. 
Position two. That was position one. As you'd expect, a very strike sounding middle. Position four, still on the tube screamer this whole time. <laughs> Sounds good. I still prefer that fourth position that we're on now on a clean channel. It just doesn't respond that well to um, even a little bit of gain like we're getting on the Tube Screamer. Not my favourite sound. And then lastly, Full Humbucker. Not the best sound on a Tube Screamer only. I think the split will sound better, so split humbucker. There we go. It's funny how the split humbucker just sounds awesome on everything. <laughs> Such a surprise. I know I'm repeating myself, but there we go. Cool. So, there's all the sounds with the Tube Screamer. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer. Right, let's move on to JHS Morning Glory. Blue Channel, first position. I don't know why it's set to over half volume. Let's reduce the volume. There it goes again. <laughs> right, stay on the floor. Because I found that the best tones out of the JHS Morning Glory is when it's um, no more than set to middle on the volume. Crazy how the volume makes such a difference to the tone when I'm leaving everything else as it is. Turn up just a little bit brighter, just a smidgen. Number two. Middle. Bit scratchy. Not my favourite sound, but there we go. Or favourite pickup, I should say. This is definitely the weakest one out of all of them. Fourth position. I'm playing far more chords and melodic playing than I normally do in this review so far. That'll change with the JHS AC Plus. Humbucker full. Crazy how this sounds better with the JHS Morning Glory versus the Tube Screamer for this particular full humbucker sound. Oh, sounds great. I've not actually experimented with this tone much with this pedal, which is why I'm kind of overreacting, but it's genuine. The tone might be a little bit dark, but that's because I prefer warmer tones when I'm playing by myself at home. Maybe I'd have to whack up that tone a little bit more in a live situation. Right, oh, and then before I forget, split. Humbucker. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sounds so good. And then, that was on the blue channel, but now on the red channel. Same thing all over again, very, very quick. <laughs> I just love that first position. I've said it a hundred times already. You're probably not on the video anymore. <laughs> You've probably switched off. Like, here he goes again. He's on the first position. He's going to say how much he loves it. Get over it, Sean. Second position. <laughs> Sounds great. We're on third position now. <laughs> Fourth position. <laughs> I literally went for the whammy bar then, it wasn't there. 
definitely keeping that on camera. <laughs> Funny, this fourth position on the Morning Glory sounds better than the Tube Screamer on this fourth position. How weird. Here's the Tube Screamer again. I suppose it sounds pretty good. That's a lie. JHS, Red Channel. Yeah. Okay, I take that back. I like them both. And then, Full Humbucker. Not bad. Split. You just can't get a bad sound out of that split humbucker. It's impossible. JHS, Andy Timmons. Okay, I might play faster now. So this is just with the JHS engaged with that boost. Still split on the humbucker. Full humbucker. Maybe a little bit dark. Let's turn up the air. Let's try again. Split. Oh. <laughs> Just took off the tone. Oh, whoops. Oh, no. It's all going wrong in this review. Just pretend you never saw that. <laughs> Let's try again. Split humbucker. I think I've exhausted that lick now. Right. Full humbucker. Fourth position. Third position. Second position. First position. Right, I'm now going to engage the boost on the JHS. Right, let's go. There we go. Right, that was full humbucker. Split. Fourth position. Third position. Totally untasty now. Lost all melody. Just turned into a soulless shredder. Yep, lost all soul. And then first position. Right, so there you have it. That is my updated 10 month review of the Schecter Nick Johnston. It's a great guitar. Don't let me put you off by the fact it's not got 24 frets and the fact that it doesn't have better upper fret access and, and you know, the thing as well about the volume and the tone and losing the whammy bar. These are tiny little things. Um, dead easy to fix. So yeah, it's a great guitar. I'm glad I bought it last year. They've gone up in price. Um, as of recording this video, they've gone up about, I'd say over a hundred pound um, when I've been researching online. So glad I bought it when I did. And yeah, I would absolutely buy another one of these because um, they're just awesome. And I've got loads of marks all over this guitar now. So there we go. Um, you just have to make sure you buy a hard case separately because they don't come with a hard case, which is a little bit annoying, but you know, guitars that are under a grand, you know, you don't get a hard case anymore unlike in the olden days, 10, 20 years ago. But there we go, absolutely awesome guitar. I might even get another one of these in the green color or the blue color, I've got my eye on one of the two. Right guys, so if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe, make sure to like, comment down below what your favorite tone was on this guitar. Um, what pairing did you think it sounded best? Was it through the amp? Was it the pedals? Let me know. And I'll see you in the next video guys. Thank you for watching. See you next time.